this lecture, we'll define what variables are. Variables are our way of translating abstract concepts, concepts that we discussed in the last video lecture, into something that we can study in the real world. So in this lecture, we'll define variables and in particular dependent and independent variables, and then talk about operationalization, which is how we define measurement of our variable. So what are variables? Variables are real world measurements of abstract concepts. Um, so this is where we take those abstract ideas that only exist in our minds and figure out what they look like in the real world. They must vary, hence the name variables. Um, and we use them when we're assessing causal relationships. We're asking why relationships. So this is how we say that one thing causes another thing. Those are two variables. So for example, talk through this with an example, um, Eric Potashnik's book looks at the fate of public interest reforms. And Potashnik notes that passing a reform is just the first step, so some reforms don't survive. And his puzzle looks uh, at why some public interest reforms are sticky, um, that stay on the books and have a major impact, while other ones fail to endure over time. So to think through this puzzle a little bit, there are two cases here. One is the 1986 tax reform. And this was a bipartisan effort that was Hale's way to close tax loopholes. Democrats liked it because it was a way to protect money for social spending. Republicans liked it because it would increase efficiency, reduce interferences with market signals. Um, so this is a public interest reform that ended up in the end failing to endure over time. And he compares this example with the 1978 federal deregulation of the airline industry, another kind of policy reform. Um, and before 1978, the airline industry was heavily regulated in a way that increased costs in the industry. It was totally counter to efficiency. In 1978, they introduced a reform that deregulated the industry. And that meant that you were going to be increasing competition, decreasing airfares, increasing access, um, of flights to go to places that people actually wanted to go to. So this reform did stick. Um, and so Potashnik wants to look at the different fates of these kinds of reforms. So dependent variables, thinking about Potashnik's dependent variable. Um, a dependent variable in general is a phenomenon that's thought to be caused by some other phenomenon, which is the independent variable. Uh, we also call it the BV sometimes, or just Y. Okay, so this is the outcome that we want to explain with our puzzle. And so with the Potashnik example, the dependent variable is reform durability. Um, so the tax reform was something that got on the books, was this big accomplishment, and then bit by bit, you saw that um, over time it was eroded away as more and more loopholes were added back into the system. So this is a reform that wasn't very durable. And in comparison, the airline deregulation reform was durable. Once you deregulated the industry, it stayed deregulated. And prices dropped, as we can see here with this um, graphic. Um, even you know, in the face of the fees that people complain about, it's much cheaper to fly than it used to be. And we also see a lot more um, places that, that planes go. There's a lot more air flights that exist now. So it's a more efficient system and one that's better able to meet consumer needs. Um, this reform was able to last over time. So the question is why, right? So the, we can see here that the puzzle directly leads us to look at the dependent variable of looking at these different outcomes and asking why we see this difference in these two outcomes for these cases. So the independent variables um, are our explanation. The independent variable is the phenomenon that is thought to cause the other phenomenon. So this is the cause behind that outcome. Um, we write the independent variable sometimes as IV, short for independent variable. We also sometimes write it as X, okay? Uh, and so this is just a simple way of saying the thing that's causing our outcome of interest. So with the Potashnik example, the independent variable in his, or one of the independent variables in his argument is the elimination of vested interests. So let's think through the tax reform example. You pass this really great reform that increases efficiency that both Democrats and Republicans like. The problem 
is that wealthy actors who want their interests represented in the tax code, who want to have these tax breaks, they don't go away just because you had this tax reform. They still continue to play another day, right? And so you have this 1986 significant reform, but then 1987, 1988, bit by bit, lobbyists come back and make sure that they get their interests represented in the tax code. And so you'd be layering them on. In other words, the vested interests that benefited from the old system, they didn't go away simply because you had that tax reform. And this is in contrast with the airline deregulation example. So here we see um, this is the Civil Aeronautics Board. Right here, this is um, some of the, the uniforms and the, and the seal from the Civil Aeronautics Board, which is the government agency that used to regulate the industry. That was eliminated, right? Um, and now we have just the FAA. Um, and so this uh, set of actors is gone. Um, you also have agent or airlines that have benefited a lot from the old system that are now facing competition once you introduce deregulation. So Pan Am was one of the big ones. Um, and Pan Am hold on for a couple years, but eventually was eliminated. So you have these actors that have benefited from the old system, but the, the deregulation ends up wiping them out. So they can't continue for another day to press to get their interests represented. Instead, you only have actors um, emerge that benefit from the new system. Uh, airlines such as Southwest that have a comparative advantage of flying a lot of places and finding ways to do so cheaply. And so you have these new actors come in that like the reform and the old actors that benefited before that might block it. Um, they've been eliminated in the process. So you see this entrenchment of that new reform order. Moving on to operationalization. This is a long word to capture something that is um, not as scary as it sounds. Operationalization entails how you will measure your variable in the real world. Um, so how are you going to measure each dimension of the underlying concept? If conceptualization is defining um, the, the contours of the concept, Operationalization is the counterpoint for variables, defining what that measurement would look like in the real world. A key thing to note that it doesn't mean um, how you're going to be collecting your data. It simply means how you would measure your variable. And so you need to think about how your variable would vary, um, once again, with this operational definition of what uh, a high score would look like, what a low score would look like. Um, so thinking for the reform durability example, you need to define what you mean by durability, right? Um, is it something that lasts, you know, one month? Um, does it last for five years? So you'll need to define what that means. And durability uh, for the potassium example would be a reform that is um, lasting for at least five years. Uh, you would need to define does, what does a lack of durability look like? Does it mean simply repealing the law? Um, does it mean being undermined in some other way? And so Potashnik explains that it's not simply repealing the law. After all, that 1986 tax code that was such a big reform, it wasn't formally repealed. You just layered on new and new, new um, and more and more loopholes that made it completely meaningless. Um, so the key here is figuring out what are the core objectives and what undermining them would look like. And that could entail layering new changes onto it. So this is um, specifying what it looks like. So with this example of layering new laws, you would look to see what changes in the legal code have been introduced. Um, and you would also probably look at the, the final impact of tax law. De facto, do you see um, more and more breaks offered to, to special interests? And so that's how you go beyond saying, you know, durability means something, but actually what are you going to be looking for? So what is the level of tax break that you would have to see to say that the reform hasn't um, endured over time? So just a key thing to reiterate, operationalization is not the same thing as specifying um, your precise sources of data. So with the example of thinking about the tax code and the breaks that are given, you don't have to say um, exactly what agency you're going to get the tax information from. It's more specifying what a significant level of tax break would entail.